where do we use could and where do we use would? You have to be very mindful where to use could and where to use would. When you leave, people should comment on you. So practice that your entry and your exit both are very important. Get a firm hold of the ground. Stand still. If you want to make a movement, so move and then stand still. Just remember, show, give, chop. What is it? Assalamu alaikum. How are you all? That's great. So, my name is Nevis Sultana, and today we are going to cover a bit of grammar, a bit of speaking. Grammar from my side, speaking from your side. Are you ready? That's great. But before we go ahead, I just want to have a very quick question. And the question is, can anybody tell me what is the difference between could and would? Can you see it? Could and would. Where do we use could and where do we use would? Yes. So we use could as a second form of can, but on the other hand, if we want to give some suggestion, so then we can also use, for example, uh, could you please bring me that thing? Could so that's not a suggestion, that's a request. But you're absolutely correct. So can is for present and could is for past. Yes. But when you say, uh, could you be kind enough to pick it for me? Yes. So it's not past. Is it? Yes, not past. It's present? Yes, it is request. It is a request. Yes, you wanted to say something. Okay. Okay, so would can be used as a request or instead of will. Can you give me an example for that? It's okay, you can think over, and then uh, meanwhile I can have the answer from her. Yes, sweetie. Um, when we, uh, we are about to talk about someone's ability to do, do something, uh, could you do this, or he could have done this, it is about the ability kind of thing. And All right. when we talk about would, it is sort of uh, a prediction or something, he would do this, he, uh, like it, it is sort of, he might do this, in that sense, we can use wood. Okay, anybody else? Yes. Could I add something? Of course so, you can. Yes, thank you. So, will, uh, a second form is also would. So, if we use will in past, so then we would use would. So, for example, uh, in past, if you say that uh, I, I, I would do, uh, so that would be uh, I will do, instead of I will do future. I really appreciate and like that uh, you're using your body language. It gives you rhythm. So even if you're thinking and even if you have to stop for a while, because of your very good body language, it helps me understand, right? So, yes. When would be, we could ask you, uh, it is a uh, kind of regret. Would be, I have Ah, I like this. Regret. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. So the very first thing you need to understand is would and could. These are model verbs, okay? And we use them for requests, we use them for regrets, we use them for the future activities as well. But there is a difference that we need to understand. And the difference is, let's look at the word which you actually gave a good hint of it. I like that idea, but you couldn't give me the details, so I'm going to do that now. When we talk about the word could, the word has emerged from can. Can has emerged from capability, capacity. All right? Now look at the difference here. So when I say, um, when I go, to a restaurant, and if there is a, of course there are waiters, so what do I say? Could you please get me a glass of water? Would you please get me a glass of water? What should I say? Could. Why not would? Would you please get me a glass of water? Would you be kind enough to help me? So I'm entering in a hotel, and I've got my heavy luggage with me, and I say, would you be kind enough to take my luggage upstairs? to the, uh, what do you call, whoever the helper is. 
Is that a correct sentence? Would you be kind enough to take it upstairs for me? I guess in could he uh, he he's not able to deny the deny the request we have made. Mm -hmm. In would he can uh, re refuse the request. Absolutely correct. So would is from willingness. Could is for capacity. So the waiter has no choice. If I say, would you be kind enough to give me a glass of water? Absolutely wrong. Because he has no choice. He has to. Yes. As a human and as a gentleman or as a lady, it is always a good idea to use could and would. Yes, you want to say something. Ma'am, uh, basically could uh, is used when uh, we are talking about a possible situation. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So try to understand very right. Try to understand the difference as the gentlemen and the other ladies have mentioned here that you have to be very mindful where to use could and where to use would. If, so for example, you people, if I ask you to get me a glass of water because I'm choking or I need it direly, so I cannot say, I, sh I must use would because it's not your job. But I'm, I'm going to ask, are you willing? Can you do it, please? Right? Would you be kind enough? Is, are you willing to do this thing for me? So there we'll use would. But if somebody has the capacity of doing something, there we would use could. OK? So try to understand could is from capacity. Would is from willing. So if I talk to my employer, and my employer has the money, has the finances, has the resources. So if I say, would you be kind enough to take us on a trip? No. Could or would? Why? He has the capacity, the would he use hoga. Capacity to uski hai. I could not use karungi. I know he's my employer. All right? And the annual trip is, is due. So I'm not going to use could. I know he's capable. I know he has the capacity. I'm going to ask, would, are you willing to take us to a trip? As a teacher, so you're going to ask me, so if you have to say that we homonym or heteronyms, then you say that you would, you have to say that you have to say that you have to say that you have to so aap would use karoge ya could use karoge would absolutely because capacity to meri hai main to teacher hu i can teach you i uh, i'm capable of doing that but am i willing so you have to decide people do not take care of this minute difference that we have between these two model verbs could and would so be very mindful particularly when you're appearing for ielts exams or any other language exam and um, you are using could and would there. So could and would in shape of request, this is the difference. Now we'll come down to the regrets and other things later or to talk about uh, apprehensions or future events. Okay, so that's the very first thing that I thought we should be clear about and I'm sure that we are now. There is no confusion. Is there any confusion? No. And basically you helped us Figure out, you knew it already. Okay, and very quickly now, what is the difference between, uh, can you see it? Will, will have, would, would have. So now we are talking about will, will have, would, would have. Think about it, raise your hand and then tell me. Somebody else also please. Remember, she's marking your attendance. I will give you topics and you will come at front and talk about them, but yes. For will, we want to do something. Mm -hmm. For will, we would do So to talk about future, the future simple tense, right? Mm -hmm. Can you give me a few examples? I will go to shopping uh, next Sunday. Mm -hmm. I'll meet my mom today. I'll call my friends today or tomorrow, right? And you do know that future events can be used with present tense also, all right? When we will show about something that uh, will have we use, so once, if we are certain, that's what you're trying to say. Yes. If we are certain and sure, sure. we will do this. Is 
something else but we will have to do this I'll have to go there. So you are bound. Yes. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Yes, please. Uh, when we use words, so basically the, that event is, uh, is going to happen, but in certain conditions. But will Under certain conditions. Okay. But the, uh, when we talk about will, so this event will going to happen. So okay. Event. Anybody else from here? Uh, we are not sure. Okay. Or not. Okay. Hmm. So, yes, you, yes. Uh, would have been the list of my previous essays. For example, I would have done this. Regret. Regret. Okay, in simple words. In very simple words, please try to understand that will is used when you future a certain event. You're certain that you're going to do it. I'll call my mom. I'll go there tomorrow. I'll catch the train, inshallah ta'ala, right? Would, when you're not really certain, and but you are talking about your future plans, I'd call my mom by evening. So you're not very sure, but you, you know, you're just saying that I, I, it, is, it is in my plans, but let's see, all right? So would you go with me? I would rather not, I'm not sure. So I will go with you, okay? So there I'm certain, I'm sure. Now, the moment you add have with would, it becomes an event of the past, okay? And a regret. So regret bhi hai. Aur regret ke siz ka? Aap future ka to regret nahi kar sakte na? Regret to past ke hi kisi event ka hoga. So ye foreign, jaysa hi aapne would ke saath have lagaya, to ye na request hai, na ek uncertain future event hai. Ye chala gaya? Past mein. Aur ye chala gaya regret mein. Aur uske liye jo sentence ka structure hai, this is basically a third conditional sentence, right? I would have done better. And please remember that you have to use the third form of the verb, verb right? The past participle, this is past participle. Bhi kehte so if you are talking regret, ki baat kar rahe ho, definitely you have to understand you need to have another clause in this sentence. Because one of the clause would be, if I did not do this, so, So, if I had called him on time, I would have, I could have. According to willingness and capacity, you would or could ko replace karoge. Make sure that you can use could, you can use would, but you have to see was it in your capacity or matter you have a willingness with her. So, I could have saved him from failure. So, could have saved if I had. If ki jaga aap sentence had se bhi start kar sakte hain. Had I called him earlier, had I called him on time, I could have saved him. Meri capacity mein hota us waqt phir. I could have saved him from this accident. Okay? Had I listened to my parents' advice, I could have saved a lot of money. I could have got admission in GC. Or you had ki jaga if se start kar sakte hain. If I had listened to my parents' suggestion, advice, I could have gotten admission. Got bhi theek hai, gotten bhi theek hai. Ek American hai, ek British hai. So the third form is get got, gotten or got bhi theek hai. So admission in GC University. So would have, the moment you add have with would, it goes in the past and it is a regret. And when we're writing such a sentence, we have to have how many clauses? Two, Two clauses. Because eight clause mein to aap apni wishful thinking bata rahe hain. Aur ek mein jahan aap us regret ko change karke ek desirable result. Ke ye ho jata uski jagah pe. Which is out of question now because it's in the past, you can't change it. It's hypothetical. So that's where we use would. It's for hypothetical situations, right? And now, what, what about will? I'll will have to go. Yes, you want to say something. Uh, will have is the helping verb for future perfect tense. So uh, if we translate the sentences, it is. 
So mm -hmm. it is um, like it is for the past, but we use for like uncertain past. Like past or future? Mm -hmm. Yes. It is also comparison that you don't have any choice to. I have to listen to him. I'll have to answer. I'll have to participate in order to get my attendance marked. So that's obligation. But I'm not talking about ob obligation. I'm talking about what she said, that it is a perfect tense of future. Any perfect future tense would use which form of verb? Third form of verb. So. जब हम विल की बात करते हैं ना आई कॉल माई माम आई हैव माई डिनर नो आई थिंक आई एम गन मिस आई आई नॉट हैव माई डिनर सो आप एक टाइम फ्रेम की बात नहीं कर रहे हो ठीक है सो यू आर जस्ट यू आर जस्ट टॉकिंग अबाउट एन एक्टिविटी दैट यू आर गोइंग टू डू इन द फ्यूचर एंड यू आर नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट अ टाइम फ्रेम वेयर एज विल हैव बिकॉज इज पार्ट ऑफ द परफेक्ट टेंस एनी थिंग विच हैज टू डू विद परफेक्ट टेंस उसके अंदर टाइम फ्रेम आ जाता है उसके अंदर दो क्लॉजेज आ जाते हैं ठीक है सो बाई टू थाउजेंड फिफ्टी नहीं बहुत आगे चला गया बाई टू थाउजेंड थर्टी आई विल हैव अटेंड माई बायोलॉजी डिग्री ठीक है अब मैंने विल हैव बिकॉज इट्स अ परफेक्ट टेंस तो मुझे थर्ड फॉर्म ऑफ लगानी है सो आई बाई टू थाउजेंड सो The very first clause has a particular time frame, और उस time frame के अंदर हमने जो target, जो aim, जो goal achieve करना है second clause में हम will have plus third form लगा के उसको mention कर रहे हैं So will have is not only used for obligations, but here talking about as perfect tense के इस time period में ये हो चुका होगा ठीक है ना So अगर आपको याद हो perfect tense is always about चुका चुका है चुकी है So if you talk about मैं I have taken my breakfast. मैं खाना खा चुकी हूँ I had taken my breakfast. मैं खाना खा चुकी थी Is this sentence correct? Correct? Yes. I had taken my breakfast. Yes. No. What is the mistake? I had taken my breakfast. What is the mistake in this sentence? Time. People, wake up! Time, time, Don't time. sleep, sweetie. Time. Yeah. Time frame. मैं आऊँ आपके पास और मैं आई कहूँ मैं खाना खा चुकी थी या मैं कहूँ मैं मैम हिना से बात कर चुकी थी सो सो वॉट सो यू वॉन्ट लिल मोर इन्फॉर्मेशन फ्रॉम मी सो वॉट नेक्स्ट राइट सो बाय द टाइम यू ऑफर योर लंच आई हैड टेकन माई मील सो आई हैव टू हैव एन अदर क्लॉज अटैच विद इट अदरवाइज पास्ट परफेक्ट जो है या फ्यूचर परफेक्ट जो है वो इनकम्प्लीट है रॉन्ग है दैट्स ग्रेट So should I now give you topics for public speaking? Okay, you're going to come here one by one and you're going to first of all of course you would have time to you'll have time to think gather your material and when you come here you have to say at least 10 sentences. So I'm going to write your do's here. Ten sentences is a must. Then, make sure that you know where to give the rising intonation, where to give the falling intonation, or if you want to give the rise-fall intonation, or <clears throat> this is rising, this is falling, and the opposite. So that's important. Also I would like you to make sure that you add tonality in whatever you say you add tonality in it three things okay of course the basics body language we all know fluency we all know saying things correctly articulating them pronouncing them and relevant to the topic okay so don't go astray so just talk on the topic that has been given to you okay so is this all set yes. all right where do we give the rising intonation the rising intonation when you want to arouse curiosity all right when you're asking a question which is a yes no question all right are you following me yes. 
Yes. Right? That's an example. <laughs> but that's good. The answer was yes. So now you understand. It's a yes, no question. Are you there? Okay. You're getting me. Okay. Anybody want to say something? So that's a rising tone with a yes, no answer. Then you have the falling uh, intonation or the falling tone, which is used when you're giving statements or information. So when you come here and you're giving us information on the topic uh, that you choose, so you're not going to choose the falling, into, uh, the rising intonation. You're going to choose the falling intonation. All these sentences that I'm uttering right now, they have falling intonation. Um, all the sentences I'm saying have the falling intonation. Is that correct? Yes. No. no. <laughs> it has rising intonation. So is that what you're going to do? Rising. No. So you're not going to, when you're giving information statement, you're going to come up with falling, falling intonation so that you sound credible and certain. And if you are not sure, then you're going to have the rise, fall, fall, rise, that's your tone. Tonality, you're going to say things with emotions. Let's try to work on this thing. Let's vow that we will grow more plants because it is the need of the hour. So you're going to bring tonality by elongating the vowels in your sentences, uh, words, by putting stress on certain words. Is this all clear now? Can you start? Should I show you the topics? Can you see it clearly? Yes, hmm. So it's 9.48. You have seven, eight minutes to pick one topic of your choice. And then you have to come here Speak for two, three minutes with balanced body language, articulate words properly, right, and rest is there. Look at the audience. Okay, let's let's listen to him. Hello, how are you? So my name is Ali Reza and uh, I talk about climate change or global warming that uh, comes as a result of a rising global warming. So I have uh, brought uh, two or three points and uh, in this regard, uh, first is that uh, global warming is a transnational or transboundary issue. So in this regard, uh, global leaders should cooperate with uh, one another because uh, uh, this, uh, you can say that bad effects of uh, climate change uh, don't respect boundaries. So in this regard, uh, uh, politicians uh, throughout the world, they should um, uh, give a hand to one another uh, so that this problem can be tackled in a comprehensive manner. Uh, and second point is that uh, particularly uh, after uh, post-disaster management uh, also quite important. For example, we had uh, ter I would say horrible uh, floods in 2022. So after that, we were exposed that we were not coming up with uh, adequate preparation to tackle th that thing. So in this regard, post-disaster uh, management or uh, I would say climate resilient infrastructure in this regard is very important uh, so that uh, once we are through that, uh, bad period. So then uh, we can come up with this uh, uh, management or uh, mechanisms which ensure that our infrastructure once, because climate occurrences uh, reoccur, so once they come again, so then our infrastructure withstand uh, ferocity of these disasters uh, in one way or another. And the third and final point uh, that is also quite important in this regard, uh, and that is uh, youth should be mobilized in this regard uh, because uh, uh, young people uh, are the people who would be bearing the brunt of climate change in future because policymakers would die in two or three years maybe. So that is the thing. And, uh, and, and particularly in Western countries, uh, youth uh, is mobilizing as they are uh, filing lawsuits against uh, effects of climate change as they are having anxiety what would be happening. So these are things I, would be, uh, I, I have discussed in this uh, speech. Thank you. You're welcome. Very good. Very good. 
wonderful vocabulary. The vocabulary, you, know, you have expanded resource of lexical resource, uh, expanded lexical resource, and it was brilliant. Now, a few things, okay? Not that I'm criticizing, it was a wonderful thing and uh, very confident. We need to work a little more on the body language. The body language, continuously, so this is a visual distraction, right? A visual clutter. So you have to have different kind of uh, kind of body language. You need to add that in your speech. So make sure that you just don't keep doing one action time and again. Your eye contact was continuously there. You need to make sure that you reach out all of the people living in the hall, uh, sorry, sitting in the hall. Also, you have to make sure that your body language reaches them. Eye, reaches, eye contact reaches them and your body language reaches them. And you can always switch your mic from this hand to another hand so that you can address them and then you address these people and then people in the middle. Uh, rest was really good. Uh, tonality, you could have uh, bring more tonality in it because the topic was such that when you come here, three things, say the topic, explain it, conclusion. solutions, uh, the problems, and then the solutions, and then the conclusion. Number one, number two. The beginning has to be strong, and the ending has to be strong as well. So when you leave, leave a question or a comp an apprehension or a concern in the audience and then leave, okay? So don't leave the party with a weak vibe, okay? Um, that's wonderful. Yes, please. Hello everybody, I'm Aruja Vaith and I'm going to talk about communication skills. So first of all, we need to understand what is communication skills. So communication basically is to interact with others, to communicate with others and interact with others to, uh, to exchange the ideas. So uh, the basic thing is that it is a skill, not a trade. It can be improved, it can be learned from society, from your surroundings. So the other question is how can we improve it? Like, uh, how can we work on our uh, communication skill? Okay? Uh, so, you can learn this skill from your surrounding. Try to socialize with others. Try to absorb their uh, positive things from the communication in yourself. And the most important thing is to practice it. Like, from learn from surrounding, try to interact with others, and then practice with others, those people. They are, they are, uh, practice with those people who are good with communication skills. Okay, so the other thing is that why communication skill is important in every field of life. It is important in every field of life. You can, it brings confidence to your personality. Uh, it, uh, it helps you in your professional life. It, ha like, it is a basic shine, it brings a basic shine in your personality. So try to improve your communication skills to improve your personality. Thank you so much. Wonderful job, wonderful job, great. Very good voice. A strong voice reaches people. So your voice has a great impact on others. Um, so that was a very good example of a strong voice, a powerful voice. Tonality, both of you could have worked more on tonality. So now let's see how. Is it important to learn this skill? You said it in a very straight way. So add a question, a curiosity that you want to know. So how we need to understand how important it is to learn this skill, but how can we do it? The answer is very easy. Look around you, learn from people who are better than you. Interact with them, don't shy away. This is tonality, that you say your sentences with emotions because otherwise it will be very difficult for people to listen to you for long when you have emotions people connect with you okay so we need to work more on our tonality you were looking at these gentlemen but you were not looking at lady <laughs> so you were looking here you were looking there body language was good overall just a good job i really like your voice so my topic is uh, power of uh, positive thinking uh, we all, since our childhood, we always heard about that think positive, think positive, think positive. But 
I generally didn't know the actual meaning of what is thinking positive means. Uh, since I started uh, studying uh, sociology as a subject, my major, uh, I actually start thinking about the, is this uh, what is positive thinking. So the point is, uh, when you uh, think about the positive aspects of everything, uh, every uh, every aspect of life, then you start believing in things that they uh, they would they would going to be uh, good uh, in future. So when you start uh, thinking positive and uh, uh, believing things, then you start manifesting. When you manifest things, then things actually uh, go well in your life, and that bring. Uh, positive vibes in your life, uh, mental peace. And this, this actually uh, did happen in my life. So it's my actual experience. And uh, it's, you can say, uh, my own uh, way uh, to uh, bring peace in my life. So that's it. For, sorry for the jittery voice. No, no, I'm no, having no, 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 no. That's flu. perfectly fine, perfectly fine. It's a very good job. You guys are quite miser in clapping. We didn't clap for her. Did we clap for him? Good job. Very good job. So can I have the strengths of that lady from you people? What good things did she do? Let's look at the board and tell me. Let's look at the board. Body language. So should I put a tick or a cross? A tick. Wonderful. What, where else? Tonality, yes. Did you see the difference? Yes. Tonality, right? Okay, so we're going to put a tick smile. here. Smile, yes. <clears throat> smile is very important. All three of them had a very good speech rate, right? So a spe your speech rate matters a lot. Are you really fast? Oh, you're very, very slow, and people may sleep there. So you have to bring in a balanced speech rate. And you can go fast if things... What you're saying is not really important, and then you slow down if something important is there to tell, okay? What about this, the intonation pattern? All of you so far, all three of you had very good intonation pattern, which is amazing. Um, eye contact can be improved, can be improved, okay? A powerful entry and a powerful exit, I'm afraid. No, right? Please work on that. When you leave, people should comment on you. People should think about it. So practice that your entry and your exit, both are very important. Dunya mein aana aur dunya mein jana. Dunya se jana, jo hai. Ji, aap aajay aur phir skwad aap. And yes, you need to stand still. When you are here, can I? Yes, so sorry. So when you keep moving, it shows that you're not confident. Okay, just get a firm hold of the ground. Stand still. If you want to make a movement, so move and then stand still. Move and then stand still. Please go ahead. Hello, sorry. good morning. Hope you are doing great. My name is Shweb Nawaz and I'm from GC University and I'm doing political science. So today my topic is uh, what can we do about global warming? What is global warming? The rise of temperature of the globe where we are living. Um, and it is a serious issue. No one on this globe, either he's from Northern Pole or the, from, uh, are from s s Southern Pole, he's uh, not immune from this, the consequences of the global warming. Even um, uh, particularly the Sub-Saharan uh, countries, peoples and the Asian countries, people uh, are more uh, uh, are more uh, uh, affected by this thing, uh, and how? Because they in this gen in these areas, uh, the females have to travel long distance in search of water due to global warming. They have uh, further they further have to travel long distance just to uh, find out water, because in these regions, females have to uh, go outside to search water. And uh, uh, due to global warming, previous year we have uh, faced the consequence in the form of uh, flood. And uh, what uh, uh, caused the global warming? Most uh, uh, the important thing that that is that contribute uh, contribute to global warming is that uh, uh, deforestation. Deforestation. How can 
वी कम्बेट ग्लोबल वार्मिंग वी शुड इनकरेज रिफॉरेस्ट्रेशन द यूज ऑफ पब्लिक ट्रांसपोर्ट मोर एंड मोर दिस इज वाई बिकॉज बाई यूजिंग मोर एंड मोर वहीकल्स इट कुड इट कुड इट इट emit cfc gases which is very dangerous and which contribute a lot to the global warming so by encouraging the public transport it could uh, uh, we could combat uh, the global warming by reforestation uh, and this is the uh, solution about um, global warming thank you very thank much you. thank you very much g what do you think was the information good yes. the information was very good right Uh, was he confident? Yes, he was confident. Was he standing still? No. No. So when you move a lot, it's a visual distraction, right? So people, you people's attention gets to your movement than to your message. So you have to stand still. Your own attention is then diverted. Okay. Pocket in uh, hand in the pocket. Is it good? No. No. Please make sure that your hands are not in the pocket. Uh, they should be here. Also, um, there was a moment when you forgot. I mean, you missed a word, which is absolutely fine. Very natural, very normal that you're talking about something and you know the right word is just not coming in your head. So then you play the trick. So what is it? You tell me. Put it on the audience. So if they're listening to you they'll say CFC the carbon dioxide the emission the carbon print so different answers would come so it is very normal and it's okay if people judge or get to know that you have forgotten the word but then play with it all right throw it on them all right yes and because you are from not from Punjab where are you from if i may ask yes so you have uh, this um the dialect right it mixes with the so you need to work more on the clarity of the pronunciation we need to work more on the clarity of pronunciation rest was really good thank you very much please assalam alaikum good morning my name is uh, najib durani and uh, today i'll be talking about the power of uh, positive thinking Uh, as we know being uh, uh, as a human being we cannot resist thinking uh, we are receiving positive and both negative and positive thinking from outside the world so it depends on us that how we perceive those perception or how we perceive, receive those uh, thinking so we we can it, these think, thinking is inequitable in, in, in and we can resist uh, uh, negative thinking in our life so if we think positive what uh, makes uh, this to us positive thinking uh, plays uh, an important role in our lives uh, uh, as uh, uh, doctors and uh, scientists say that positive thinking can uh, make you uh, comfortable in every environment so if you are thinking uh, negative about about thing that it makes you uh, confused and it it also takes your energy so we have energy and we should uh, use and we should uh, spend the, that energy in a positive way in a productive way so uh, the, you know human being is a production of his own thinking so it depends on how, us if we are uh, thinking negative about things we will, our personality will be converted to uh, uh, like it will be considered a negative personality so uh, it is it is in our hand and it is our imp- uh, control that we we can change our thinking if we want to change ourselves so uh, uh, there are many uh, uh, that that uh, positive uh, uh, aspects of positive thinking that we can make good friends in our lives uh, we can have a good company and we also have uh, you know some uh, positive thinking also makes us uh, also make makes us able to uh, uh, cooperate with people so if you are cynical person if you are skeptical person it uh, consumes your energy and you will be uh, you will be thinking uh, on the negative aspects of your life it will make it will make it will uh, make you ha- unhappy in your life so if you want to keep yourself uh, uh, happy and if you want happiness in your life 
if you want your well being in your life then you should uh, always focus on the positive aspects on your life so this is from my side very good thank you very much <laughs> wonderful did you like the content yes. very good content i must say all of you are coming up with very good material actually uh, a few of you have very very strong language also very good vocabulary also so that was content was amazing i um, am impressed was he standing still no. no so these are all visual clutters okay when you move your legs so the very first thing is stand still stand still because you were not standing still your speech rate was faster okay so having a normal speech rate not faster not slow but in the middle helps people understand and connect and the moment you become really fast you cannot have tonality in your speech when you do not have tonality in your speech people cannot listen to you for a longer period of time try to understand that 2 minutes 3 minutes okay more than that no so you have to have the right rise and fall in your speech you have to have the right stress pattern you have to be fast and then you have to be slow insert pauses where they are needed so speed up slow down insert a pause stress go high go low just like we do in speeches and debates okay rather in debates not speeches so eye contact we need to work on that a solid body language please if you are confused you do not know for example when one of you uh, came in this was the body language so just remember show give chop what is it show give chop so this is show okay so today we are going to talk about this important topic and we all need to understand so this is show you're presenting uh, this is give sorry give 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 and then we have the show uh, where you do the action so for example we need to recycle in order to you know uh, be sustainable so we need to think hard so this is show and try to understand the importance of so this is an action so this is show and then we have the chop so show uh, give show chop so say no to plastic we need to say no to per, uh, the personal cars and we need to support the public transport so this is how you bring a balance between your body language and it doesn't become lousy or informal okay now i want somebody to please come and talk about number 5 who can do that please number 5 intonation so far is very good from all of you okay that's please assalamu alaikum my name is faza and i will talk about my hometown so lahore is my hometown and i was born brought up and get education from lahore the same city and uh, we have many historical places to visit from uh, in lahore for example bashai mosque minar e pakistan shalamar garden and many of you of course visit are you yes uh, yes okay and uh, apart from that lahoris are very open hearted people and uh, we are very open hearted we welcome we warmly welcomed our guests and sorry no no go uh, ahead it's okay sorry. don't worry what's the best part of lahore was uh, the taste uh, the food tastes are very yum 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 <laughs> yes yum uh, yes of course we like to eat uh, many different spicy foods and uh, we would love to have uh, love to have biryani and desi foods like uh, but there is one uh, actual problem rising in lahore is air pollution mm -hmm. and i want to talk about it 
because uh, we may use many uh, on personal uh, vehicles to for a short journey we will support uh, public transport for that because uh, last since last year uh, lahore is on number 1 polluted area so uh, we should get over from it uh, from the pollution thank you so much thank you very much very interesting facts and because we are all most of us are lahoreis so we say yes to all what she has said guys when you come here don't just start talking that's where your heart beat and your heart beat rate is you do, you're not able to control it so when you come here the very first thing is to like the part yes you have to get hold of the ground under you every action has an equal reaction if you put stress if you put pressure if you give energy to this earth it will give it back to you and that's what you feel you will feel it okay so try to feel strong when you're standing with a little with your legs a little apart also when you come have a look at your audience first connect with them don't just start with your name or assalam alaikum so you come smile at them okay smile is a very very powerful tool it it is uh a visual attraction and when you smile and then talk it comes in your voice people can feel it in your voice also when you're smiling right so so you come you stand you look at people you smile you choose your body posture and this gives you time to bring balance in your whole body posture your heart rate and the sweaty palm and the troubling stomach okay so please try that all those who are coming who are going who are going to come now i would like them to try it who's coming up next please okay 1 2 3 then okay and then 4 okay so let's see the body language give show chop and say things with emotions okay hello everyone how are you all as you know we are already communicating with each other do you agree yes, yes. here we are the teacher here he she is also communicating with us one way communication but in a way we all are communicating with her too it doesn't involve just only one field it involves many other fields like if we consider a doctor the doctor communicate with his patients he communicate and the communication bring up the patient in comfortable level that's why he able to uh, give him prescription beside this if we consider a psychologist she talk with the patient with the clients and that's how the uh, client feel comfortable communication is the foremost i in my opinion is the first thing that we all have to consider and this skill is very important Uh, not just for psychologists not just for doctor it's for teachers is for businessmen as businessmen have to deal with their different clients not only in their in his own country but outside countries so communication is the foremost thing we all have to consider if you are feeling low in communicating with others so i here's a tip that i consider i talk, i talk mo uh, most of the time uh, in front of the mirror to gain my confidence to communicate well to stand up in front of all of the people and what to speak i also practice it so there are little things that we forget and in a speech uh, that what to talk next so these things i in my opinion uh, all can do practice in front of the mirror to let uh, to uh, neglect this little things that make us uh, non confident i must say that so that's all by my side you must consider my tip that i give you that to practice yourself in front of the mirror to gain confidence to uh, make your communication skills more better and better thank you all very good <laughs> wonderful job
Wonderful job. G, how about tonality? Very good tonality. How about body language? The, this arm was moving very well. Only if you could, instead of this, make it firm. Hand should be straight. So whenever it goes like this, it becomes informal and casual. But you were moving, you were standing still. Uh, it seemed to me that you were making eye contact with everybody. Now, I don't know if you were looking at their heads or in their eyes, but to, it, to me, it seemed the eye contact was good. The speech rate was very nice. And the voice, again, just like hers, yours is also very strong. And a strong voice has a great impact and influence on others. So well done. Overall, a very good job. A very good job. Did we clap for her? Aap me sir? Aslam I am Tahreem. And the topic I've selected is the same as the previous girl, uh, communication skills. And um, I must say that communication is important in every field of life. Um, let's say if I talk about uh, every field like being a doctor or, or even a patient, uh, if I'm not able to communicate my symptoms properly, I cannot go through a proper examination. So communication is the key to every solution, to every problem. Uh, it, uh, it gives us a solution. So uh, if I'm being a teacher, I cannot teach properly if I cannot communicate better. So communication uh, can make us land multiple opportunities. So uh, if so, I suggest everyone to uh, work on their communication skills and uh, improve them. Uh, it is always going to pay us off and it is never going to get wasted. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you very much. Very good. Okay, I forget. <laughs> so that was a good job done. That was a very good job done. You had the smile on your face, which, is, which reaches people, right? You tried to move both of your hands. We could, I could tell that. You were standing. You just came. You took your time. Then you started. The end, though, was abrupt. Do not end your speeches abruptly, okay? Please, your entry and your exit both have to be powerful. So I'm just saying it time and again, saying all these things time and again, so they settle down somewhere in your subconscious, unconscious, and you know, when you come here on stage, wherever you are, it would help you, all right? Please. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, I'm Atiyah Rahman from GC University, Lahore. Um, before I dive into my topic, uh, there is one thing I would like to share with you all. Uh, some days back, I was thinking, uh, I attended a TED talk and I was wondering how the TED speakers come up with such good body language and with such um, amazing, awe-strucking uh, confidence. And here we are. I manifested anxiety for myself. So the topic I choose for myself is the number seven, balance between work and life. Balance, work, life are the three terms that matter a lot for the anxious generation that is us. Um, before uh, considering how to maintain or how to establish balance between work and life, uh, it is very important to consider what we consider as work and what we consider as life. To me, um, life is life. Uh, a part of my life is buying books, caring for them, and keeping them, and sometimes lending them to my friends and all. But a person who uh, manages a library, a person who has a library, does the same thing for his work. So what is work for the other person is life for me. So let us first sit Beautiful. down and uh, decide what do we consider as work and what do we consider as life. Fabulous point. Thank you. Uh, then let's come to um, uh, how do we manage or how do we perceive the balance. Balance is not 50% work and 50% life. It is not about um, a pie chart that is divided right between it. It is a pie chart that has 30% work, 10% uh, uh, entertainment, 5% hobbies, and 
all sort of that it is not 50 50 percent ratio uh, why uh, the balance thing uh, makes us anxious it is because we try to do nine to five and five to six life we we try to divide it we cannot divide our life into 50 50 percent so the second thing we should be working on is clearing or uh, the misconception that work and life are 50 50 percent of our daily routine um, the third thing is um, let's sit down and um, get to know ourselves. Do we thrive in organization or do we thrive in chaos? I thrive in chaos, but does that mean I do not need or I uh, should not be organizing myself? No, because in order to thrive in even in chaos, we need to have some plans. We need to have this is my priority, this is my time block, and this is what I want to do in this day. That is organization in itself. Organization is not only uh, 10 a.m., start to work, this a.m., do this, this time, do this. Organization uh, it, like varies fr uh, from person to person. Um, last of all, uh, like have moments with yourself. Consider what you can, uh, what are your goals and all of that, those things, and uh, strive for maintaining a balance between your work and life. But it should not, as I always say, it should not feel like a task. Uh, Work-life balance is a lifestyle and not a th task. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Did you like the content? Yes. Amazing. I'm sure it has helped you think about it and the point she raised about introspection, self-reflection, know yourself, know thyself is absolutely important because once you know yourself, so for a lot of people, their work is their life. And if they give, start giving more time to their friends and family, they get into depression. So you need to know, as she mentioned correctly, that what are your passions, aspirations, and what is life for you, and what is work for you, okay? So good job done. Now, what you need to do, because you are a very good speaker, I can tell you now, just bring a smile on your face. Keep it there, yes. Just keep that smile there. So, um, number one, number two. Now, you had a beautiful pool of ideas just try to bring a little more of fluency in them, okay? Because you, were, you, in the beginning, your tonality was good and you were giving stresses, but then later on, maybe because you had your eye on the time and you wanted to make it, you know, you were just compacting all the ideas within that given frame time, so you shoot it. And there, your tonality suffered so you speak for two minutes, give less ideas, but make it impactful, okay? Great job, I like you people, seriously, wonderful people, all of you. Who is coming up next? Yep, yep. Aap uske baad, so one, two, three, okay? Oops, oh, I am so sorry, you didn't raise. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. There you go, sweetie. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Amna Sif and I am currently doing bachelor's from uh, University of the Punjab. And uh, my major is French and I am a language student. I am going to talk about food, people and clothing. We all love food, right? Yes. We all love junk food, KFC, McDonald's, butt karai, everything, right? And uh, we don't really like to eat food from home that our mom <laughs> cooked because it's bland. We just need to eat KFC because it's good and it's Does easy to make. Does your mom know that you're calling her food bland? <laughs> <laughs> it's being recorded. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> so, but there are certain effects of uh, junk food, like uh, from uh, uh, ex excessively eating junk food. We can get cardiovascular disorders, and we can get lazy, we can get obesity. There are many factors of eating uh, junk food. So I personally don't like to eat junk food and I prefer to eat uh, pr uh, 
foods that are high in protein because they help you get better they help you get uh, in shape next up is clothing every sort of clothing in my perspective is good but um, the clothing should be modest even and modesty doesn't have a gender it should be for men and it should be for women brilliant <laughs> beautiful sentence we have often seen men that in parks they used used to wear shorts and half sleeve shirts that's not okay and uh, women here we all know but it's okay as long as your clothing includes modesty then it's okay i don't mind it i don't dislike it and the last one is people every person is beautiful in their own way there is not a single person that doesn't have flaws. We all have flaws. But personally, I don't like people. I keep my distance from people who cannot take like other people's opinion. They get hyper about it. And they cannot, they cannot uh, understand their perspective. We all have our different perspectives. People who lack empathy. Yes, exactly. So we should be able to understand how other people are thinking. They're not the same. We have our own perspective, flaws, and pros. So we should learn to listen to people and understand their perspective. Maybe they are right. We don't know who's wrong and who's right. So that's all. Thank you. Brilliant. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Wonderful job done. Again, very nice stresses, very nice pauses, very good voice, a strong voice, eye contact, body language was very nice. Only if you could just stand straight. Why? So you're, we're sitting here with fellows. So just imagine we are at, at a TED talk. We are participating in Toastmaster. There, uh, when you shift your weight to one side of your body, it doesn't look professional or formal. So just shift the weight. Put it equally on your both leg on both of your legs, and that's it. Rest was very nice, very good content, very good uh, information. Well done. And can we have the young chair who is under the weather? You ready? <laughs> there you go. And then we are going to we were supposed to have you and you, right? Yes. Hello. Good morning, friends and fellows. Uh, communication. You know, what is communication? But before that, let's talk about positive thinking. Uh, do you know about positive thinking? Sorry, I just forgot that. <laughs> uh, tell me something about positive thinking. I would love that. Positive thinking is the way you think about uh, I got you, I got you. Uh, something you want to add? Anybody from ladies? Anybody? Let me Google that. Uh, leave it. So you see, the thing that I did is called miscommunication. That's not the communication. The best part of the communication, you know what is it? It is a thing that you both, uh, uh, both parties do to understand what each and everyone has to say to other. Let's hear out what other has to say for you. Positive thinking. Uh, you're making me out of topic. Yeah, anybody? Something about positive thinking. Being optimistic and pessimistic. So maybe Got you it. can take a start from there. Yeah. The mindset. The mindset. Being positive. Yeah. That's a good thing, ma'am added, and thank you. I'm thankful, sorry. <laughs> You're welcome. You're okay. Welcome. Uh, I don't know that much about positive thinking because in my life, all I had is negative thoughts, overthinking, negative marking, <laughs> negative grades, and all I think as positive is just positive one in my bank account and that positive sign on my back. That's all I have as a positive thinking. So, 
when you talk to someone, when you communicate with someone, you make them to tell them about something about themselves or something they want to tell you about, they, they want to share their thoughts with you. So I think this is the best part of the communication is to hear each other out. Let's hear what a person has to say about you. Because we as a person make this whole thing as a society, a bearable society, a society which understands other, a society which understands what each and every person has to say to other. And what I have to say to you, just hear each and other, every one person here, what they have to say to you. Thank you. That's all from my side. So you are not under the weather. You are under negativity. <laughs> all right. So I'm afraid I'll have to, because I have to give um, the negatives and the positives, the you know, but yeah, pro yeah, the weaknesses and the strengths in everybody's speech. So what I would like to tell you is that it is absolutely fine that when you come here, you, whew, everything is gone. You don't know what you wanted to say, right? Um, you can even forget the topic. Doesn't matter. It can happen. But then, if you think this feeling prolongs. You know, you need to excuse yourself because jumping from one topic to another topic and not giving the right content would confuse people. It's just like an application or a letter that you have a subject in the beginning and you tell the person that, okay, this is one of my topic and my letter is about this thing. And when you continue in the very first paragraph, you tell this is my concern. In the second paragraph, this is what I want. In the third paragraph, sum up and thank you very much. You don't jump around and you stick to the subject, right? So when you come here and you, okay, so I was supposed to talk about, or I am supposed to talk about the power of positive thinking. And then you're lost and okay, very good deal that you ask her and you ask him and you ask them. And if, if it gives you a path or a lead, you take that. But then what I noticed, if it was a gimmick or a trick to gather ideas, I'm afraid why it didn't work well because it was prolonged. So if you forget your ideas, make it short. Okay, guys, so I'm supposed to talk about positive thinking. And you know what? When I was sitting there, I had these brilliant ideas. And I was thinking of so many things. And now when I'm here, gosh, look at this podium. It's so scary. Standing in front of all of you, everything is gone. How about I come back again? Sounds good? I'm not going to waste a lot of your time. So thank you very much for, you know, uh, just bearing this. And then you go, doesn't matter, absolutely fine. Because nobody is expecting a remarkable speech or an outstanding uh, performance here. We are all learning from each other. We are all learning from each other. And trust me today, I've learned such beautiful things from different people, vocabulary, ideas, voice, perspectives. Everybody has something to give. So we learn from each other, but don't prolong it. The trick wouldn't do, would lose its effect. Right? So who was supposed to come? You were? Come? Ajay? Ajay? That's quite uh, very good. Empathy. Very nice. And also, I would like to say that get hold of a speech rate. The speech rate cannot be too slow, all right? People should not get confused whether you have stopped or are you going to carry on. So choose the right speech rate. Janab. Fatma Shfiq here. 
मल्टीपल टाइम्स इन योर लाइफ यू हेयर यू थिंक अबाउट दैट पॉजिटिव थिंकिंग पावर ऑफ पॉजिटिव थिंकिंग पॉजिटिव थिंकिंग इज गुड फॉर योर हेल्थ फॉर योर मेंटल हेल्थ फॉर योर हर बॉडी फॉर योर सोल यू थिंक अबाउट दैट लाइक दैट बट वन टूडे आई विल पोट्रिएट अनदर पिक्चर ऑफ पॉजिटिव थिंकिंग आई विल ट्राई पॉजिटिव थिंकिंग आई विल नोरेट अ स्टोरी ऑफ ओल्ड मैन वन डे इन अमस्जिद इन अबी वन ओल्ड मैन कम इन टू द मस्जिद नबी एंड आस होली प्रॉफिट हजरत मोहम्मद सल्लाम ओम अल्लाह मसिंजर वैन विल डे ऑफ जजमेंट कम होली प्रॉफिट वसलम से वर्ट्स योर प्रिपेशंस वॉर द डे ऑफ जजमेंट ही सेड ही प्लाइड ही प्लाइड नथिंग बस ही रिप्लाइड नथिंग आई जस्ट लव अल्लाह एंड अल्लाह मसिंजर वेरी मच होली मोहम्मद सल्लाम जस्ट स्माइल ही इज़ वेरी पोलाइटली स्माइल एंड थे एंड से यू विल बी विद अल्लाह एंड अल्लाह मोहम्मद सल्लाम इन द डे ऑफ जजमेंट दिस इज दैन द ओल्ड मैन इज टन दिस इज अ टर्निंग पॉइंट गाइज द ओल्ड मैन इन टन एंड ही पास द यू इन द मस्जिद नबी The Sahabas worried. What? What you did? Are you crazy, old man? Holy Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم says, "Please don't worry. Nothing to happen." And then he passed the urine. Holy Muhammad. And the, then he passed the urine. Sahabas are worried about what? What he did? Holy, uh, Yar Sula Allah. The Holy Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم says a very good, very good, uh, a very good comment on him. Holy Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم says, "Look at this man." Look at this man. He is a paradisey. He is a heavily. He is a janti. So, so I will try to say that it's all about your perception. It's all about your perception. What what you perceive about him? He is, he says he loves Holy Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. Then he urine pass in the masjid nabi. He is old man. He have no manner. So it's all about your perception, what you perceive. Positive thinking. It's not mean you positive with yourself. We all say we positive in yourself. It's not mean like that. It's positive. Positive thinking. It's mean like that. You positive with other in a bad in a bad situation, in a worst situation. Please, guys, in a worst situation, you must be positive in, in with others, with very humble, very polite. Holy Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. He always very humble, very polite. He smile. He smile in the worst situation always. Thank you so much. Very good. Thank you very much. Sorry. Thank you. And that's why you are smiling so much. That's a very powerful thing. Yes, smile does go a long way. So. What we need to bring is a little more formality, okay? So that we don't look or sound casual. Stand straight. Your posture matters a lot, okay? Your tone matters a lot. And then the content, of course. So very good job done. And we have two ladies here. Somebody from there also? Please come. Who was? Who? The last one? Please come. आप कहीं भाग तो नहीं रही? Okay, that's very kind of you. Very considerate. Men here. One, two, three, four. Gigi, आप भी. Five, <laughs> six, seven, and eight. There you go. Assalamu alaikum my name is Ira Makram and i stand before you today to talk about the topic which affects us all positive thinking for me it's a blessing to see good in every situation no matter how tough it is do you agree or not yes, certainly yes yeah it's a, a very initial step to become productive and happier in our lives it changes the way we behave uh we used to listen a very old quote that everything happens for our reason for our Better. on good <laughs> exactly you don't remember the words <laughs> it means uh positive thinking is not about expecting the best to happen every time but accepting that whatever happens is good for the moment i always believe in that um if all you all remember that we used uh, we watched a very short movie here in the foundation the secret what was that about power of 
पावर ऑफ थिंकिंग वेरी गुड याद है आप लोगों को पावर ऑफ थिंकिंग एक्चुअली तो इट्स वेरी असेंशियल टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट आवर थाट्स आर वेरी पावरफुल दे शेप आवर डे दे शेप आवर लाइफ तो अ वेरी सिंगल और पॉजिटिव थाट इन द मॉर्निंग कैन ब्राइटन अप आवर डे वेरी वेल इन द एंड आई वुड से दैट बी पॉजिटिव एंड हैप्पी इन दैंक यू वेरी गुड वेरी गुड वेरी गुड लवली ओके सो वेरी गुड वॉइस वेरी गुड कॉन्टेंट नाइस स्ट्रेस एंड पॉजिज but only if you could move a bit of your arms that engages people and that also gives rhythm to you, to your speech i don't know uh, do you have a weak eye sight okay so when you blink your eyes rapidly for a few seconds it seems that either you're getting lost in your thoughts you're losing the hold of the information or you're thinking so try not to do that okay support it with your body language so let's say if you're so tells that i am confused so instead of that when you're saying something and you're lost and you've you don't know what you were supposed to say so the body language helps there and you buy a few seconds and okay so that's what you were supposed to say so these hands this body language that it helps you a lot all right janab yes okay <laughs> great Assalamu alaikum I am Umme Habiba so you all are being very bored I am uh, observing that so so I have chosen the topic that likes and dislikes or as a nation we all are very much interested in other people's likes and other people's life what they are uh, supposed to like or to do in, in their life so first of all I will discuss about the my likes of food Uh, as the other girl said that uh, they uh, love uh, junk food or any other from uh, uh, outside i prefer mostly homemade food because my mother cooks a uh, very very good and it is also not good but also very nutritious uh, nutritional uh, nutritious for uh, nutritious for uh, food for us because at this era we are very much anxious in our lives we are lazy uh, we are not going uh, uh, good at our work so we must have good food to keep us healthy and wealthy so uh, apart from the food that i don't like is that that are very much uh, spicy and they are not like much uh, blandly foods there must be a normal uh, combination and for uh, and the best part is uh, i am a sweet tooth so i like a sweet dessert after any meal so coming towards our second uh, thing that people as amina said then uh, no one is bad and nothing no one has good uh, perfect no one is perfect and no one has fully flaws so we must look on the dislikes as a quality not as a person is uh, bad or something to in uh, in the sense of quality i don't like people who are not well management in their time or are disciplined or they do not like as uh, the other girl said they do not like to accept the criticism Uh, especially in the phase of uh, your religion or in the phase that uh, you, you should understand that what they are uh, they are wrong so coming towards uh, the clothing as the uh, amina and other uh, people also uh, agree on that the every clothing is good as far as it is modest so one should not only go for the modest clothing but also he or she should go for what suits her no and what suits for the particular event not we can wear any sort of a uh, 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 not good thing like heels or any sort of shiny clothes in a professional setting and likewise for the male it is not good to have a casual t-shirt or a trouser for any sort of uh, setting that is not prof- uh, that is not casual so it is for my side and i hope that you all people uh, you uh, do consider what are those likes and dislikes in the manner of your preferences and should not impose on others what you prefer thank you wonderful thank you very much thank you very much so we're going to have just one more person you yeah because you're practicing so well i want you to come here don't shy away any chance that you get to face the audience do it आप भी फ्रंट पे आ जाएं बिकॉज आपने भी बोलना है डजेंट मैटर डजेंट मैटर डालिंग एवरीबडी इज ट्राइंग एंड यूर ऑल डूइंग वेरी गुड जॉब हियर वी आर लर्निंग फ्रॉम एवरीबडी राइट प्लीज रिमेंबर दैट पिक अप द राइट स्पीच रेट योर स्पीच रेट मैटर्स अ लॉट ओके ऑल्सो 
When you're talking to people, whether it's a small one-on-one -on -one conversation with a smaller group or a bigger group, your words, that you know, the way you utter them matters a lot. Articulate them, enunciate them properly. Your words should not run into each other. The sentences should not run into each other. Learn the art of giving pauses where they're needed. Okay? So, yes, ma'am, there you go. My name is Arhama Norem. I'm doing my BS Honours in Chemistry from Lahore College Women University. As everyone say, these topics, I would like to describe this topic number six, that dislikes and likes of me, not yours. I like myself. I appreciate myself. I like good food, good people, good uh, clothes. I like food that makes me happy. I would like to eat desi foods. I like bad krahi. I like shawarma. Shawarma, I say it, it's my life. <laughs> I can't survive without shawarma. Oh dear. <laughs> I like at my ends. It's like heaven. I, when I eat shawarma, it's like, oh, I am in the heaven. I fly. I don't think it will come from anywhere. Next, I like clothes. I would like to wear different styles. I wear abaya. I wear Eastern, Western both. But I am so comfortable in my Eastern clothes because they are, I think they cover me. And uh, I like to wear these clothes because um, I think clothes are for our cover. <laughs> Next is people. I prefer positive thinkers. I prefer the friends that are appreciating me, that uh, think about my flaws and don't discuss in everybody. They always tell me, don't in the grouping and don't in the, I would like, if I have flaw, they tell me. I will correct it, not others people correct it. Beautiful. Very nice sentence. And I think we should like these people, not criticize others. We should appreciate ourselves. Other selves also, but we should firstly prefer ourselves because we are the one who always be there for ourselves. Wow. <laughs> Thank you so Beautiful. much. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you very much. See the magic of smile? See the power of smile and see that even if the content is not in order, if the, let's say, I mean, the pronunciation or the grammar, you don't, you have a limited vocabulary, but if your content is right and if you're, the, the way you're conveying it is interesting, people would listen to you and they would appreciate you. All they would remember is your pleasant disposition. Very important. And now we have a beautiful lady over there, the last person, oh my God. Should I call double one double two? <laughs> Should I? Should I get a glass of water for you? That's the spirit. That's wonderful. When you come for public speaking, do not hold anything. You will end up fidgeting with it. Okay? So don't do that. Okay. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum, everyone. I'm here to talk about time management and balance your life and work. Hmm. First of all, finding balance in your work and life is super important, right? Absolutely right. When we don't prioritize our work, uh, our task, we, uh, they, they, make our, they, they make us tired than actual. First of all, we have to prioritize our work, our task, and it's crucial to take regular breaks and avoid burnout. We have, we have to take uh, activities in our uh, life to bring joy and uh, delegate our work, delegate our work when, it, when it's possible and say no when it's necessary. Self-care is too important for ourselves. Get well sleep, well uh, mm -hmm. eat eat well and anything make you 
हम्म हैप्पी डेजिग्नेट सेपरेट स्पेस फॉर योर सेल्फ इट मेक इट हेल्प यू टू स्टे अवे फ्रॉम योर पर्सनल लाइफ एंड ब्रिंग फोकस ऑन योर वर्क एंड एट द एंड we have to disconnect from uh, disconnect from your uh, life to give time to your work and as well as give time to your work uh, uh, and personal life uh, and stay away from your work stay focus what what you are doing right now thank you wonderful really very good and seriously your pauses your stresses were brilliant thank you so much it was very good actually so you see it's not difficult you didn't you were trying to shy away but it was was it a death sentence <laughs> coming here not at all okay so we're going to wrap it up very quickly all of you did a very good job trust me every one of you did a wonderful job um we i have talked about all of the uh, all of these things so i'm going to just ask you to please work on your grammar please work on your grammar you have to have command over your grammar okay whatever your language you know whether you're using urdu english japanese chinese french doesn't matter you have to have good hold of grammar number 1 clarity in your speech okay and also communication is a two way process remember yeah. so when you're sitting there as a listener so are you sitting there as a dummy as a zombie are you nodding or not because your nod or your aha uh -huh, or your smile can give confidence to somebody who's dying here <laughs> so please complete this two way communication if you're there as a listener be a good listener be a supportive listener and your body language can you know can help somebody who is in a bit of trouble here so thank you very much i hope that you have learned something i have certainly learned a lot beside grammar and beside being a good listener please add tonality you people are good here 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 uh, here bring emotion in your speech whatever you say say it with emotions people should feel what you're trying to convey thank you very much have a wonderful weekend ahead bye bye you have to say some good job you can do that you all should do that